you create a diagram by right-clicking the application and say new and say diagram. You get the question of what should be the name of the diagram and let's call this diagram 1. You click on it and you get the famous program organization unit editor. It looks like if it was any other editor, it has a declaration pane, it has a message pane, and it has a code pane. The new thing is that the code pane is now a diagram rather than anything else. First thing I always do when creating a new diagram is to hide the declaration pane because we will not need it any longer. Everything up in the declaration pane will be filled out automatically for us. Next step could be to decide what size and orientation of the page we would like to have. You click in the diagram and you say page and you say settings. Here you can switch between different sizes of the page and also the orientation. I live in Europe, so I will go for A4 landscape because that forms need to pages when I print it on, on paper later on. I can zoom and unzoom just so that you see that now I have a A4 landscape paper to draw my logic on. The editor is very much based on the principle of drag and drop. You can have your project explorer next to your editor and you can start to browse around in, in the project explorer and just drag and drop things onto your area. So let's make some amps. You just draw them onto your drawing area. Let's zoom a bit more so you see them. I can, of course, also drag, drag other kinds of blocks onto the drawing area. For instance, in basic web, I have some timers. I would like to have a timer on and then timer off. And let's look for a PID controller as well, which is typically used by control modules. So this is now my PCC. You see that I have some functions. I have some function blocks and I have a PID controller on the same drawing area. And they are represented by different colors so we can see which one is of the certain kind. It's now very easy. I can just mark an area. I can do copy. I can do paste. I can do paste again and I have even more M blocks. It's as easy as that. I can do Control Z to just undo what I just did. And the undo is actually, there is no limit. So you can do redo, undo as you wish. We move around these a bit. I will expand my editor now because from now on, we don't really need to see the Project Explorer any longer. Connections between the blocks is made in a very simple way. You just mark a port, you press down your mouse button, and then you get a, an arrow, and then you just land the arrow on a port somewhere, and now you made a, made a connection. And that you can do in, in any direction. So in this case, I can do a connection like this. I can do a connection like this, or like that. The editor works in the basic principle that you place the blocks and the editor will route the lines for you. And this is totally opposite on how the FPD editor works. I can move around my blocks and the editor will reroute my lines for me in an automatic way like this. I often get the question then, but how about the execution order? In what order do I know that my blocks execute? 
Well, you see there is a figure or digit behind each and every block. This is the execution order. This is the order in which the blocks will be executed. And the execution order is based on the distance between the upper left corner to that particular block. In this case, you see this is block number one, and this will be executed first. And this is number six. But if I put that up here, that will now become number one, and this will become number two. But what happens if I take number two and put that up here? Well, it's still number two, because the second rule is that the editor also follows the connections between the blocks. So in this case, the editor sees that block one must be executed before block two because it feeds data to block number two. After a while, when, when you have put lots of blocks on the screen, it, it can start to get a bit messy. You would like to align the blocks either horizontally or vertically or both. You can do that very simple. You can just mark an area, and then there are commands up here saying align left, align right, align top, or align bottom. You can also do right click and do the same thing, align left, right, top, or bottom, like that. Sometimes, there is a need to have a an, an conditional execution of a block. Either because you actually want it to be like that, or because you have a need of debugging the code in some way. And that can be done very easily. You can mark a block, you can right click and say, give me an EN port. The EN port means that this particular block will only be executed when the value of the EN port gets true. It's a sort of an if statement in, in structured text. It doesn't mean that the blocks behind will stop to execute, but they will get frozen data. So when this goes false, this block will not execute any longer and the output will get frozen. And it can be real neat to use that when you're debugging complex logics in order to see what the problem is. When you want to create or connect to a variable, it's as easy as clicking on the port and say, I want to have a variable. The editor will suggest a name based on what the block's name and port name, but let's call it variable one. I now created a variable and connected to it in one stroke. Same thing if I want to do a communication variable. I can click a port, I can do add communication variable. This will be my CV1. And now I've produced a data that can be used either in this diagram, somewhere in this application, or anywhere else on the whole network. There's always the need for doing comments and descriptions when writing code. And there are two ways of doing that in the editor. One way is to give a description to a particular block. I can click on a block, I can right click and say a description please. This is now a description that will come with a block. So as soon as I move it around, the description is tied to that block. Another way of doing comments in a diagram is to insert a comment block. I click in the diagram and I say I want to have a sorry, a comment. The comment is now a block that is movable. You can place it behind next to a, a series of block perhaps to explain what is this part of logic is doing or you can perhaps put it in the right hand lower corner as a footer on the page. 
A third way of using names is to give a name on the page. You can see down here that this is page number one. When you're working with many pages, you can have up to 100 of those in a diagram. It's easier to have names on the different pages. So I can click and I say give it a name. This will be my page one, like this. You can now see it has a number, but it also has a name. Speaking on pages, you can always create your new pages if you wish. Click in the diagram, make pages, add new page. Now I got to no number page number two, which is empty. I can give that the name as well if I wish. This is now my page two. Sometimes there is a need to connect between pages in a very smart way. So let copy, let's copy two AND blocks here. Copy those. We go to the next page and we paste them. I can now make a connection between the blocks on the different pages by simply going to this page. I mark the port. I go to the next page and I say connect to the previous selection. I now create something that we call a page connector. A page connector is something that connects two blocks from two different pages as if it were just a graphical connection. I can double click on it and then I automatically is navigated to where it comes from. Again, I double click and I go to where it's used. In the end, there might be very many, many page connectors. I can even give it a name. So this is my page connector that now has a name. So I can double click on it and see it. Here I see it goes to page number two and the name of it is page connector. Sometimes we have, when you have ended up with many pages, uh, let's make one new page to visualize what I'm saying. There is something that I called organized pages. The pa organized pages is a user interface where you can see all your pages in the diagram. You can even reorganize them if you wish, like this, if something needs to be rearranged. 